Hello, my name is Ian Pyle and I'm the manager of Shire's Income Trust. The Trust is a UK equity income trust which has the aim of delivering a high level of income to end shareholders but retaining the potential for capital growth over time. And we do that by investing primarily in UK equities but we differentiate the portfolio by also holding around 30% of assets in preference shares to provide a high level of income, by holding overseas equities to provide diversification, by having smaller company exposure, and also by having a small covered option writing program to further enhance income. Today's video is a quick update on the markets and how the trust has been performing and what we've been doing in the trust recently. Starting with performance, um, performance has been I think good in the last few months. The preference shares in the portfolio continue to be a drag as bond yields go higher, um, but valuations have stabilised and the equity portfolio continues to outperform the benchmark. Overall, we've lagged the rising benchmark a little bit since the last update, but income remains strong and growing, and I think overall the performance of the trust has been, has been good. When we look at markets going forwards, I think the last time I did one of these update videos, I said that I thought market levels were quite high and we were due something of a correction. And despite some weakness in the last few weeks, I still think that's the case. I still think market levels look quite high and there's not that ability to rely on continued strong underlying growth from companies and a re-rating of markets to get real upside from equities. Um, and as we come into the year end, I still expect a bit of softness in markets, which I think perhaps plays into the defensive positioning of shires. And it also informs what we're doing in the portfolio at the moment. We're trying to maintain that defensive characteristic, but we're also trying to find differentiated ideas where we can generate good returns for shareholders independent of what market level do. And most importantly, we're really focused on sustaining that high level of income. Because I think at the moment, as interest rates have risen, income funds have to look carefully at what they're delivering for clients and make sure that they have a yield that is competitive with returns you can earn on cash, but also that they are genuinely investing for long term, and delivering long term growth and a good inflation hedge for clients as well. And that's something we're very confident we do in Shires with around 6% dividend yield, but also a track record of growing income over time. That takes us on to what we've been doing in the portfolio in recent months. And I'll just run through a number of new positions that we've started, which I think each say something a little bit about what we're looking for in the market at the moment. The first thing we did, which was notable, was to actually, it was actually an exit. So an exit of Decro, which was a veterinary pharmaceutical business, which we bought earlier this year. So it hasn't been a long lived position. Um, and when we bought it, it was an example of buying a good quality company in the UK, which derated as growth stocks, basically derated with higher income, higher interest rates. Um, Deck was a company we've liked for a long time. We've held it in the portfolio before and exited when we thought valuation was a bit too high. But we bought back at the start of this year. And since that time, the company has been subject to a acquisition by private equity, which is currently in the process of completing and where there is now a slim discount to the acquisition price. So a great return in a short period of time and for us time to take profits and move on. It's also symptomatic of something we're seeing in UK equities a lot at the moment, which is bids for companies where buyers from outside normal primary equity markets are taking advantage of the really low valuation of UK equities at the moment and picking up some bargains. Now, we sold Decra and we've used that cash to refill our position in more growth oriented companies in the portfolio. So one of those is Genus, um, which does gene editing for livestock. Really technically competitive company with good IP on its assets and a very good market position and a strong track record of growth. And that's a business where it has also derated recently. It's faced some cyclical headwinds because of low pork prices in China, which affect its business and its cash return in the short term. But these are cyclical factors that don't really impact the long term value of this business. And we see that long term value growing as it continues to develop gene editing products, particularly targeting disease resistance in pigs. And therefore, for us, it's a good opportunity to build a position in a really attractive long term asset, which has genuine unique value in the UK market. The other growth equity we've started a new position in is a company called IP Group, and they are a 
early stage investor in high tech businesses that come out of UK universities. They've got a really unique position there with really strong relationships with universities and they focus on a number of areas such as life sciences, clean energy and high tech disruptors that are really exciting areas where they have some really exciting technology. They have a lot of potential catalysts coming up over the next year. But as we've seen high growth and private equity market companies derate over the last year, we've been able to buy a position there where the value is trading at a 50% discount to the NAV of its assets. And because some of those assets are listed equities, if you take them and put them to one side, you're getting the remainder of the unlisted positions at an 80% discount to NAV. Um, We've done a lot of work on how cautious that NAV is and made ourselves comfortable with the valuation. So for us, it's a great opportunity to buy something which has really exciting growth potential at a discount to fair value, which is attractive. And it also pays a dividend, which is not always the case in that area of the market. Moving on to things which are less growthy and maybe provide a bit more of the income we're looking for in the portfolio. We've started a position in NL, which is an Italian utility company. And the reason this is attractive for us is today it's paying about a 7% dividend yield, which is fantastic. That's very safe because it's in a utility environment with regulated returns. And what makes it more interesting long term is this is also a real good potential growth story. We're seeing it in the UK and in continental Europe that governments and industry need to invest a significant amount of capital in the growth of clean energy infrastructure over the next 10 to 20 years. And a company like NL, which has a significant position in clean renewable energy and continues to allocate more capital to that area, has this ability to invest more capital at higher returns in markets where they have strong positions like Italy, Spain and the US and deliver growing capital positions, growing capital returns over the next 10 years or so. And this is a nice growth structural trend in energy markets that is almost impossible to avoid. It will undoubtedly be one of the big trends over the next 10 to 20 years. If we can get a position in that, in stocks like an L where it's a paying high dividend yield, and we can look at other positions in the portfolio like SSE, for example, in the UK, it's a great way to get stable growing returns over the long period of time and create value for shareholders while also supporting that higher level of income. The other change we made in the portfolio was another exit, exiting British American Tobacco. And that's long been a good income stock in the UK market, high levels of dividend and the nature of the tobacco market has made it a very stable one for delivering cash returns over time. What we see now is that market changing somewhat. There's increased competition from new players and an increased shift away from conventional combustible tobacco towards other non-combustible products, vapes, for example. And that's changing the competitive dynamic. It's making the barriers to entry lower. And we're seeing market share for a company like British American Tobacco in its key US market come under some pressure. So despite it still paying a high dividend, we don't see the sufficient quality characteristics we look for in that company to give us good growth over the long term and a reliable dividend if we look out five to ten years in the future. So want to exit and we use that money to put it back into other high yield stocks where we see better outlooks. So for example, diversified energy is one we like, which has very long term gas demand trends in the US, has a well hedged portfolio, has very strong cash flows. And we put some money into HSBC, which is obviously a very large cap bank focused on Asia, where we see a more sustained benefit from high rates compared to the last 10 years. And we also see really attractive exposure to growing Asian markets. China may feel like a weaker market today, but the overall loan growth potential from China and from neighboring South Asian com- countries is extremely attractive for us. So a nice liquid high yielding position with good growth potential as well. Overall though, the portfolio remains positioned to deliver those important outcomes. High income, quality companies, and I think importantly today, some defensive exposure, which means we should do well in in down markets. 
Hopefully the tailwinds that have impacted the preference shares over recent years as rates rise will start to mitigate. And I think we're definitely getting close to the point where interest rates peak and start to come down. Um, and that will be helpful for performance as well. So I hope that's a very helpful update for everyone. And I appreciate your time today. If you'd like any more information on Shire's income, please follow the link to our website. Thank you.